Hello, Russ here. I recently got my hands on a looking glass portrait holographic display. I wanted to have a go at making some of my own holograms out of my own work and I thought it'd be nice to share the process with you. So in this video you can follow me as I work out how to make some holograms in Cinema 4D to put on the looking glass portrait. I just wanted to say up front that I bought this with my own money, I'm not being paid for this or anything, so this is kind of a review video I suppose. Um, and who would want to sponsor me anyway? I've only got like 300 subscribers on my channel. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's made by a US company called The Looking Glass Factory. I think it's their first product and it was funded by a very successful Kickstarter campaign back in 2018. Since then, they've put up a couple more products on their website. They're basically just bigger, higher resolution versions of this. Uh, I think there's a 4K and an 8K one, um, and they look very fancy and expensive. But the portrait is definitely the cheaper option. I mean, it's the only option for now. And uh, I mean, it's expensive, very expensive compared to a normal 2D digital picture frame. It's definitely affordable for what it is. I really wanted to see one with my own eyes because obviously I've seen a lot of videos and reviews of this, um, but you can't capture it with a regular camera for obvious reasons. So the only real option I had was just to buy one. And I've got to say, it's pretty magical, especially when you get it out of the box and turn it on for the first time and you see these first demos. It's like nothing I've seen before. I mean, it's like these things are actually sitting there. Um, some of the de demos are definitely more successful than other ones but it's pretty amazing when you first see it. The brightness is great, and from a distance of about two meters, it's very impressive. It looks like something's literally sitting there in that box on your desk. The resolution isn't that great. When you get closer than two meters, it starts getting a bit pixelated. Um, but as a proof of the technology, it's an amazing little device. So like I said at the start, I'd really like to try making some of my own holograms. There's a lot of resources to start making content on their website, which is really good. But I've got to say, none of the methods seem that simple. So this is definitely not for technophobes or people who aren't very tech savvy. By the looks of it, there's a few different ways to make content for the screen. Um, there's light field photos and videos, which I'm not 100% sure what they are, but I think you can make them using the new iPhones and Android devices, which have the face unlock feature, because they have a sort of 3D um, depth, separate depth sensor on the front of the phone, um, which gives you 3D information of the picture you're taking. So you can then use that information to make an image for the screen. I think there's plugins for Unity and Unreal, which let you do more of the real time stuff, because there's people making games and interactive things for this screen. And there's also a Blender plugin for doing rendered stuff using Blender. Um, so I want to, I'm interested in doing some renders because obviously I work in animation, I want to do pre-rendered stuff. Um, but unfortunately there's no Cinema 4D plugin at the moment. But before I bought this, I had a quick look at the forums and it looks like a lot of people are doing some DIY setups for Cinema 4D and Maya. Um, so and it doesn't sound that difficult, it's just based on an array of cameras. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So for a pre-rendered hologram coming out of Cinema 4D, the process is basically this. You have to get, uh, you get your scene and then you render the same scene from 45 different angles. This is to account for any possible angle that you're looking at the screen from. You need to render a, either a still or a video to a quilt render, a grid of 45 different images with all your different angles contained within it. I've set up a, a row of 45 cameras and I've rendered the same scene out of every single one of those cameras and then I've put it on a grid in After Effects. Uh, and then when, I, when you render that, you can bring it into Holoplay Studio, you drop it into Holoplay Studio. Holoplay Studio then encodes it again onto the device. It's a format that is native to the screen so that the screen can just play it. That way you can unplug it from your computer and then you can just have it as a display sitting on your uh, mantelpiece or on your desk or something like that. So there's no Cinema 4D plugin, there's only a Blender plugin. Um, but fortunately on the forums people are saying it's fairly simple to make your own setups. Um, so I'm following some advice from Paul Mellis and Bob. Um, and the suggestions that they've made uh, have helped me successfully make my own holograms and it's worked pretty well. So the 45 cameras that I have to make I made in Cinema 4D, uh, they need to be on a straight line, they can't be in an arc for some reason. Uh, and also they don't, you can't rotate them, so you can't make a row of, sorry, they all need to be looking at the center of the screen as well, but you can't use uh, rotation for the cameras to look at the center of the scene. You need to use a film offset, with it, which is actually some kind of skew. So all the cameras need to be parallel looking forwards uh, in a straight line, but then they need to have their film offset, the X film offset on the X axis, uh, needs to be skewed so that they kind of converge on the center of the screen. That's the way to do it. I don't really know why 
that works, but it does. It works very well and it looks um, really good when you put that stuff on the screen. There's actually a couple of different ways you can render things from Cinema 4D. If you're going to render a still, then you can just animate a camera crossing the distance over 45 frames and then animating the film offset the other way. Doing it with an animation is super easy. I did that first. I did it with um, a still of my uh, character that I modeled in Adobe Medium. And that came out really nice, crisp and clean. It's so cool. And the other way is to literally set up 45 different cameras and then render from each one. And that's much better for animation because if you've got a certain uh, length of sequence, I would definitely recommend doing loops, which is what I'll get back to in a minute. But if your animation is running for 100 frames or something like that, then you have to render those 100 frames from each camera, which you can then put on the quilt and then your quilt will be 100 frames long and you can export that to Hollow Play Studio. The difficult thing is having to render from 45 different cameras in Cinema 4D and not have to hit render on every single one. So I was hoping that I could just use a cloner to create my cameras, to create the distance between them and, to, and then use um, some modifiers to change the angle of the cameras. But obviously you, because it requires you changing the film offset, I can't do that using the modifiers in cloners. So instead, I used a cloner originally just to create 45 cameras, and then I've used an, I made a little Espresso script. It's pretty simple if you know a bit of Espresso. You just need to use an iterator node rather than bringing in 45 cameras and plugging um, a wire into each one. Iterator makes it so that you can just make changes to lots of objects quite easily, lots of same objects quite easily. And then I use a range mapper to um, make the adjustments that I need, uh, which gives me control over the distance between the cameras and also how much the film offset is changing per camera. And then the next problem is actually rendering from every single camera. I'm not gonna sit there hitting render for 45 times and it's gonna take forever and it's really boring. So there's probably a script out there to batch render from a list of cameras, but I, I didn't bother looking actually, to be totally honest, um, because I found that using takes system was actually close enough. The only laborious thing that I had to do was for every single take, switch the camera. But luckily on the take system, the camera button is right there. So it's quite easy to actually change the camera per take. So I just duplicated the same take 45 times and then changed the camera on each one. But now that it's set up, I don't have to do it again. That setup will allow me to render from any scene now. So it's quite, I don't mind setting up the take system that one time, I only have to do it once. And now uh, with my Expresso setup, I can adjust the cameras for the particular scene and then just use that take system to render out, batch render out all the different cameras. I can share my Cinema 4D file, but I'm not 100% sure uh, the best way to actually do file sharing on YouTube. So if someone can leave in the comments, if you can recommend me a good way of sharing files. Um, I've got a Cinema 4D file and I've also got an After Effects project to set up the actual quilt. Uh, the After Effects file will then make the quilt for you to render again to bring into Holoplay Studio. But I'm not sure of the best way to um, get that to you guys using a link. Um, so if someone can recommend me one, that'd be great. So the biggest drawback of this method is the render time. I had 100 frames of animation and I managed to get my render time down to two seconds a frame, which if any of you work in Cinema 4D regularly, that's a pretty quick render time. I mean, normally my scenes, if I'm working on a professional job, my renders can go from 30 seconds to two minutes really easily per frame. Um, so if you imagine, you, if you've got an animation of 100 frames, you need to render that 45 times, which is 4,500 frames. So my render was two seconds a frame, and if you multiply that 4,500 times, it comes out at just over three hours, or it, it was basically four hours in the end once I've set it all up and hit render and stuff. If you wanted to watch a 30 second animation at 60 frames a second, and your render time is around one minute, it would take 56 days to render. I mean, I'm not gonna leave my computer running for two months just to watch one animation on there. So I can totally see why they haven't really spent that much time on Cinema 4D plugins. It's because it's really impractical in terms of render time. Um, so real time is 100% the way to go. That's why the support is there for Unity and Unreal basically, um, because no one's gonna be pre-rendering stuff all the time. I mean, it's nice, I've got another thing rendering right now which I'll show in this video, but I'm probably not gonna do it very often to be honest. I had a really quick try of Redshift RT, which is Redshift's real-time side. It's not really real-time, it's kind of like a very fancy viewport render, and it still takes a little bit of time to render depending on how you set it up. But unfortunately, I couldn't get the 
film offset to work with Redshift. It doesn't seem to be compatible with the actual rendering. It's not skewing. Every time I tried to render out of the cameras which had an have had a non-zero film offset, as in they were like pointing a different direction, uh, it would just render straight from that camera. Um, so I've emailed Redshift. I don't know if that's something that I'm doing wrong or if it's a feature that they haven't included yet, but it seems to be a problem with Redshift real time rather than anything else because it works fine in normal Redshift. Like I mentioned, Unreal is compatible with Cinema 4D, so and it's been something I've wanted to look at for a long time is learn some Unreal because if I can do real time rendering, it's going to be cool. And Unreal 5 looks amazing, so now is the perfect time to get into real time rendering anyway and they did mention that there's a plugin for Unreal. So I probably will look at that at some point. So if I can figure that out, I might do a follow-up video about it. So like I said, once those renders are all done, the next thing you have to do is actually build the quilt out of them, uh, which I did in After Effects. For the still test, uh, I put the 45 frame sequence of all the different angles in one pre-comp, and then I duplicated that pre-comp 45 times uh, and for every layer I moved it along on the grid. So the bottom left is the far left and the top right is the far right, if that makes sense. And then I used, it's called sequence layers. Yeah, it's a script called sequence layers and that just offsets, you can, you can type in a uh, frame offset for each layer. Basically at the last frame, all the frames are on screen and they're all offset by one frame. So you get every single frame of those 45 frame sequence on screen in the grid. Um, for the video test, it's kind of different. It's a little bit more complicated, but essentially it's the same thing, but I had to offset the animation by the full length of the animation each time. So I put all the videos into one big long sequence, which is in my case was 4,500 frames long. And then I had for every 100 frames, I offset that again. So it's the grid, same grid built up but they all need to be running for 100 frames at the same time. You can look at it in my After Effects project if I can figure out how to share it. So after you finally manage to get the quilt out of After Effects, all you have to do then is drop it into Holoplay Studio and it gives you a real-time preview on the screen. Um, you load up this screen as a second screen to your computer and then you can see it straight away. It doesn't. You can't see the videos, but you can see the stills working perfectly fine. And then you just hit Sync Playlist and it puts all the stuff that you've got in Holoplay Studio, it just puts it onto the screen so that you can then unplug the screen and you can just give it power and it will play everything on there. And the end result is super satisfying. It was amazing to finally see something I've made on there after the first time I figured it out, it was really cool. After I got the animation on there, it looks amazing too. So I just made a few tests. One was the still of the character that I modeled in uh, Medium. I just put him in a little box and lit it and it made a really nice, satisfying still of the character. After that, for simplicity, I just rotated him on the spot and rendered out a 100 frame sequence of that. It was actually a loop so that I could make it loop for, for longer. I, and then finally, I did a test with some animation that I'd made uh, for a short film last year with some friends called Green Life. It was animated at 12 frames a second, which gives quite an interesting effect. So I was really happy with all the results that I got. Rendering them out is so satisfying and it's such a nice thing to have a picture frame with some of my work on there. But if I'm gonna do it again in the future, I would definitely figure out the real-time method of getting things out and onto the screen. I hope you enjoyed that look into making real life holograms using Cinema 4D for the looking glass portrait. This screen is definitely more of a learning tool or something I would play around with in my spare time. I can't really think of any practical use for it beyond bringing it out to show friends as a novelty or maybe putting it in the background of YouTube videos, but even that I could do with a regular picture frame screen. Even the holographic effect itself is a bit of a novelty. The magic of it wears off really quickly. I can't really see it popping up in regular screens, like I don't think it's gonna be on your phone screen anytime soon, unless they can figure out a way to make this technology like super cheap that they can just throw it in as an extra. Plus, as you saw, making content for these types of screen takes way longer and is way more expensive. It's the same with content for 3D TVs and 3D films. Getting rid of the special glasses is definitely a bonus, but I don't think it's enough to warrant the extra effort needed to make the content. The gain that you get out of looking at stuff like this isn't as much as the amount of extra effort and expense you go through to actually make the content in the first place. Although that said, there could be some kind of special use case for these screens that would be really useful. I can totally imagine buying one of these. Like if you hang it on the wall and it has a little light-filled camera built into it, 
and you can just phone up someone else who's got one of these and you can basically see them standing in front of you, then I can definitely see that being a thing. I'm not going to use it as a screen to make video content for, I'm not going to watch a film on this thing, but if I was going to phone my parents with my kids or something like that and they can actually see each other and interact more in a bit more of an immediate way, then I can definitely see that happening. Plus there might be some completely unthought of cases, I mean that's why they're making these things, it's, it's definitely a test device, these things come with so many different ways of using them. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of the community in the future and I'm sure it's going to be really fun no matter what. Hit subscribe if you want more animation related content in your life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.